Here's the current situation. So my last video, which was Computer Evolves to Generate Baroque Music, got a lot of attention. It might be my most liked video ever. So I wanted to do a sequel to show what happens if I keep progressing, because a lot of people wanted to see that. But the issue is, my brother and I decided to upgrade the GPU in my computer, but like my brother's the only one who knows how to do hardware stuff, so like shout out to him. Here's his YouTube channel and like he does stuff like this, so subscribe. Anyway, we found out that upgrading the GPU is a lot harder than we thought. There's my computer there. The motherboard was too old so it wasn't compatible, so we had to buy another motherboard, but that one was too big, so there's just a lot of complications. So long story short, it's not quite working yet, so I can't do any sequel videos. But what I can do in the meantime is answer a few questions that you have on my video. The first question is, am I going to make this open source? And the answer is yes, because first of all, the main chunk of the code is just Carpathy's LSTM code, which I'll link in the description, and that is open source, so you pretty much already have the code that you need. But even with that, I think in the future, maybe in the next week or so, I will upload a video tutorial showing you exactly every step of the process along the way that I went from to get from the training data MIDI files online all the way to the outputted generated MIDI files on the other end. And I'm going to show you every single step so that you don't have to struggle through figuring things out as much as I did. Um, I'll, I'll put my own processing scripts online, and pretty much my goal is that like anyone who wants to auto-generate MIDI files can do that as well. But that brings me to the second response that I heard a lot, which was stuff like, you're taking the soul out of music because music is an inherently human creative outlet that like computers can't, can't ever do because they don't know emotions. Um, and yeah, like I get what you mean. Okay, so first of all, I don't think that computers will ever be able to write Bach music as good as Bach because it can only get closer and closer to getting as good as Bach but never better, as in it can never originate new patterns in its head. It only tries to regurgitate stuff it's heard before. So I understand the argument that humans will always still be better at producing music. But the second thing is like the accusations that I am like outsourcing jobs to machines, that I need to rethink my career or whatever because I'm destroying musicians or whatever. This is just a fun experiment, right? Like when I read Carpathy's article about his LSTM and I saw that it was replicating Shakespeare, I wasn't thinking, uh-oh, Shakespeare's got some competition. He might go out of business. I mean, he's dead. I was thinking like, oh, this is just a fun little tool that we can use. And like, it's kind of humorous how bad it is, but good at the same time. And when it gets something right, like we can kind of laugh because it is just a computer and somehow it's figuring it out. So I wouldn't think of the long-term ramifications of it all because, like, yeah, it's just a fun game. I, I would call it a game or a toy. That's really what it is. Even though I am going to keep trying to improve it further using different methods, I would still say that humans are the ones who set the patterns for, like, what defines what music is, and computers maybe someday will be able to repl replicate it at the same level of quality, but humans will always be the source of those patterns, like the source of the training data, if that makes sense. So I don't think musicians are going to be out of a job anytime soon. Unless we get a, an AI breakthrough! <laughs> Three, it sounds like jazz. You like jazz? Yeah, it does. So I think one other genre of music I will try training it on is jazz piano music, because if it already has the tendencies to sound like that, maybe that music is right up its alley and it'll be able to learn that even better. Yeah, and then four is... Uh, someone talked about how my text encoding of the music was inefficient because one character was only representing a single note being pressed, whereas if like four notes are being pressed at the same time on a piano, like there, there's a way to encode that all in the same at the same time in the same character of the LSTM, and I actually realized that too when I was originally messing with this LSTM before I made this video. I was trying to avoid using one hot vectors only to encode stuff. I, I like I don't know if this is getting too technical. 
because like I'm not even a technical person. But if I could instead have all four notes being encoded in a single column, as in they all register at the same time, then I feel like the LSTM will learn it better because it, then it doesn't have to keep track of time since a single character equals one time step. It's already being taken care of. I actually edited Andre's LSTM code. I called it instead of one hot vectors, not one hot vectors. Um, and I actually got it working to the point that it could generate Perlin noise pretty um, believably. However, like when I tried it for other stuff, I only like trained it for like 10 minutes, but it already wasn't producing real results that I liked. So I stopped it. But I will experiment with that again if I can, and who knows. I also heard a lot of people recommending that instead of encoding just the plain notes to play, I should instead encode the intervals between the notes. Um, and that sounds like a good idea, except it's kind of assuming that the notes are coming in one at a time. Um, so what happens if you have like a whole bunch of like five or six notes playing and they, they change at different times? It gets a bit confusing. Perhaps one solution is just to calibrate it with the um, key of the piece. So if it's like an E major, always make the E note zero and then like F is one and F sharp is two and all that. I think that would actually work and someone named Demipixel recommended it. Except I found out that the MIDI files that these are stored on, some of them have the key actually written in the file, but most don't. And I don't want to go through the work of manually figuring it out. So I might not do that. Another recommendation I heard was even more controlled. It was that instead of training it on music, I should teach it music theory, like scales and chords and arpeggios and harmony, and tell it what rules are allowed and which ones aren't allowed. Um, that approach, I think, is like manual AI. Like there's a, there's a term for it where um, it's literally just like really smart people in the field programming if-then statements saying like, you know, if you play an E, your next note should not be B flat or something like that. And that's what they did at the beginning of AI, like in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, I think. But time and time again, it's proven that when the machine gets to learn these patterns for itself, without a human actively doing anything, the machine learns much better than if the human tries to intervene and tell it fixed rules. Why? Because every rule has an exception. Like English spelling, the rule I before E except after C doesn't work for words like height or weight. So it, it would just be an endless mess of if-then statements if I were to try to manually tell it exactly which keys went together and which ones didn't. But if I kind of let the computer analyze the raw data itself and try to find patterns itself, it won't be like 100% perfect, but it'll be more organic and it will kind of find its way around these exceptions and rules so that it kind of satisfies the most patterns as it can while um, violating the fewest. I would just call it organic. I can't really think of any other way to say it. And plus it's less work on me, right? Like I want to put in as little work as possible since I'm a human and humans are lazy. Another common question was, what is loss per note? Um, I guess I did gloss over that, and what it means is when the machine is training, every time the LSTM guesses a note based on what it's learned so far, it then compares its guess with what the training data says, oh, it should actually be this. The goal is that the difference between the guess and the actual result is as small as possible, because if you get a difference of zero, then that means that the LSTM is exactly replicating the output, I mean, the training data, as close as possible. So that difference between the training data that is essentially perfect, ideal, and the um, guesses that the LSTM makes, that's the loss. I also saw a lot of people saying that, oh, if it can learn Baroque in like a day or so, then pop music it should be able to figure out in like seven minutes, because pop music is even more dumbed down than Baroque. And yeah, like pop music, they use the same four chords a lot, right? So I agree with that if you were to just look at the sheet music of pop music, that would be even easier to learn. However, I think at this point, what makes music sound good is not the melodies or harmonies, since we've already kind of figured everything out. I think what makes pop music sell or not sell is the texture and the timbre of the notes. Like what instrument is playing, or how many effects can you add onto this note to make it sound grittier or wetter, or more echoey, um, those traits can never be encoded in MIDI entirely. 
So in order to actually create pop music, I think we're going to have to go all the way and deal with raw audio. Um, and I have my strategies for how I might try to do that. But because of that, I do think it might actually be harder to generate pop music because you do need to deal with so many more dimensions. Like with Baroque, it's really just pitch and time. With pop music, you have pitch and time. And al although in those two dimensions it is simpler, you also have the timbre and reverb and echo. I don't know. I, I don't know these terms, but you get my point. There's just a lot more dimensions determining how music will sound the way it sounds. I also saw a lot of comments saying something along the lines of, cool, you created procedurally generated music. That was first invented decades ago. Implying that I thought I was the first for some reason. So I understand that I'm not the first to do this in any way. Like I was, I was even using somebody else's LSTM code at all. So like I'm, I'm pretty much just using other people's work all around. I mean, in most of the communities on YouTube, like gaming or beauty or vlogs or whatever, everything is just people's rehashing of older work. So I think it's totally fine. Oh, there's Michael. And also like, I don't think anyone has shown the process of training, like every step along the way for such a long period of time. Like I've seen a lot of videos showing what the AI produces, that music, but only for like 10 seconds. And you need to hear more than 10 seconds, so that's why I gave you like 5 minutes. So that you can like, you can jam to the music in your car and stuff. But anyway, yeah, like it doesn't have to be original for it to be a good YouTube video. More comments. So a lot of people offered their GPU for me to use, essentially saying like, give me your program and I'll run it on my GPU. And that way you'll have a ton more like distributed processing power. And I would do that. I know there are resources that make cloud computing or whatever easier. However, I'm just worried for a few reasons. One is that like I don't know if if like my programs will be compatible because it doesn't work in the wrong operating systems. Sometimes like I might access a file on my computer that's just like randomly sitting there and then I forget that I need to use that. And then the other thing is it would suck to set up this really intricate system where everyone's computing my stuff only to have it not produce good results at all. So I would only do it if I did like a test run on my own computer and saw it start to make promising progress. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm pretty certain that if I just had more computing power, I could get much further. In that case, I would feel good with letting other computers do my work because I know that when it's all done, they'll feel good that they contributed to this really good product at the end. And finally, the last two types of comments that I saw are one, okay, YouTube, I finally watched it. Now get out of my suggested videos. Which, okay, so first of all, like I don't get to choose what, what shows up in your suggested videos, so don't blame me, but I'm honored that YouTube thinks that my videos are worth suggesting. And then the last comment I saw was saying that my video was really interesting. Some people were saying that it was the most fascinating video they'd seen on the entire website. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's just, it's really nice to hear because I'm just kind of goofing off on my computer and when I discover something that's like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen if I tinker around with and like input my own files. I, I just mess around with stuff and I just think it's really cool that so many people have decided to watch me as I do this tinkering. Um, oh, and that reminds me, I actually hit 100,000 subscribers because of this video. So like, that's a big honor. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the cliche YouTube speech about how grateful I am that, that like you are providing me this like career, but I will say thanks. And here's footage of the exact moment that it happened. Hey guys, Carrie KH here. Look what's about to happen. 99,992 subscribers and rising. I'm so excited for 100,000 because, well like just two days ago, I was below 90,000. So I didn't think it was gonna come this quickly. Waiting for that silver play button. But it's not about the the awards or trophies, right? It's about the community. So even if I, if I oh my god, one left. Ah! Oh my god, 100,000! That was so fast. Whoa! Oh, and two more. Okay, gotta stop overreacting. But that is cool. Thanks for subscribing, everyone. Um, I went back down. But okay, one thing I noticed about this website, what is it? LiveCounts.net is that when it um, adds another digit to the whole number. It doesn't do a very good job of transitioning the whole thing over. So like, whereas the vertical movements of the digits is very smooth, like you can see there, the horizontal transition of like now recentering it all it just goes pop. And like, I'm not complaining because this website's quite cool. But yeah, that pop, I notice it every time someone does like a live stream of them hitting a million or a hundred thousand. Anyway, let's see what's going on. 
It's not gonna load. Ah! Uh. Oh, there we go. Yay! Wow! Oh my god, so many happy emojis. Wow, this is very cool. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so there we go. Oh, look, that number looks like it's in binary. But the next thing I want to point out is something that happened... Well, let's see. It is currently 2.37 on Monday, meaning March 13th. Now, if we go back two days to Saturday at around 11 p.m., we, f we find this message. At this rate, 90,000 by tomorrow and 100k in maybe a week or two? Remember, this was about 36 hours ago. Let's not get our hopes up. Hans S314, let's not get our hopes up for 100k in a week. Well, it happened in 36 hours, so we should have gotten our hopes up even higher. <laughs> So Hans, watch what you say next time. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna stop antagonizing people for no, no real reason. You're all nice people. But a video would be boring if it was just me talking to the camera the whole time. I mean, my excuse for not doing anything else was that my computer didn't have a good GPU. But like, who cares about that computer, right? Like, I, I've got that one, which is a Surface Pro, and... Where is it? That one, which is a MacBook Pro. So like... I can clearly still do stuff. Come on, Carrie, you gotta do more work. So I, I did do more work. So here is the situation. Carrie has just created a neural network using Andre Carpathy's yeah, code to, to make a bot that will generate fake BFDI, IDFB comments. Beach Boys Fan Forever says, please do not got eliminated. Uh, Does that seem like a real comment? Or um, is that a fake comment to you? Here you go. Three. Two, one. Oh, I'm right, I'm right. 